you're a screenwriter and especially a beginning screenwriter, let me help you skip a lot of research and I'll give you a lesson that I arrived at. The core of this idea comes from Ilya Kazan and his book on directing where he states, unity to climax, everything must build to the climax. It's a wonderful principle for directing but probably a more essential understanding for writing. It also reaffirms this idea when writing of knowing your ending, your punchline, payoff, climax, end of the line. Imagine if you will beginning a first draft, going forward allows unpredictable possibility, but going backwards exposes that which is required. This phrase comes from the book Backwards and Forwards by David Ball in relation to playwriting. It reminds me that you don't really know the first word of your screenplay until you've written the last. So finish that first draft and only now can you work backwards. By identifying the climax and working backwards scene by scene, you can cut away anything that is unessential and strengthen the aspects that build to the climax. If it's not contributing to that climax in some way, why is it there? What is its purpose? This is why a finished professional screenplay reads like magic. Everything seems to be pointing in the same direction. It feels so effortless, almost destined. And when you get to the end, you realize how important every detail was along the way. But it wasn't magic. It was inspiration and intuition at some stage, but I'm sure 80 to 90% was a math problem of how to reverse engineer the story to serve that final payoff. So let's take a look at how the full Monty delivers one of the most emotionally satisfying and feel good endings by analyzing it backwards and seeing how all the moving pieces are shaped to guide the audience's experience. You could start from the end and backtrack the entire plot to make sure it works logically and story wise, but instead let's focus on a specific character, my favorite character. Dave. His final triumphant moment in the climax is this. It's not just undressing, it's the full circle of self-courage. It's the action of overcoming body image issues. It's a display of self-worth. And his wife's reaction is as important to this moment. Her feeling of pride and unconditional love can radiate as she sees her husband become unburdened by his internal issues that has been the hole in their relationship. So let's go back. Back to just before the show, Dave shows up after refusing to perform, bringing the group back together again and his first real action of courage. It delights audiences because we know he's facing adversity and it builds anticipation for the climax moments away. The climax works because he takes a stand in this moment. This would only be possible as a result of his previous scene, probably the most emotional scene in the film. Dave is accused of cheating, his wife thinks it's the reason that there's a gap between them, and the truth finally comes out. Dave admits to stripping with Gaz and along with it pours out his self-doubt and body image issues. Gina, who wants to see this dance? Me, Dave. I do. Only it's met with comfort and love which sets up the support and courage in Dave to do what's right by his wife in the climax. Building on the scene previous where he does right by Gaz, this is when we start to see a shift in his character. He walks away from the perceived solution of his job for his friends, again reinforcing the theme of togetherness. This is a fitting parallel to the previous scene, where we see Dave beginning his new job and tells Gaz that he just can't. This is Dave hiding, settling because of his fears, walking away from his friends group, doing what he thinks his wife wants him to do, but is really an afraid shadow of a man, showing us the lengths that he'll go to to avoid facing his own demons, and it stacks the internal stakes for that almighty turn in the climax. As we go back further, we realize that his scenes become more about developing empathy and conveying that internal issue of self-worth and self-image. The most iconic shot being this. As we go back further, we recognize how the film layers in and sets up his struggle from the early scenes. Big man. And it seeds right back to how his wife talks about him here. Oh, you know, it's, it's like he's giving up. Work, me, 
everything. So fast forward through all the emotional terrain and we realize that this is more than just unbuttoning. It's a man bearing his soul proving to the world that he hasn't given up on his wife, on his friends, on himself. For the audience, it's an internal moment of triumph, made all the more moving because his journey is one that is so universal and relatable that we can easily put ourselves in Dave's shoes. So his victory is our victory. And as the full Monty performs the full Monty, it simultaneously transcends as an action of overcoming deep personal adversity for anyone who's ever felt like they weren't enough. This deeply human and universal internal struggle is what connected with audiences and made The Full Monty a phenomenal box office hit, making over 250 million from a budget of 3.5 million, making it the highest grossing film ever in the UK, until it was outsold by Titanic. Which is ironic because The Full Monty was also nominated for Best Picture that year in 1998, which that year was won by Titanic. But when you compare the budgets and scales of each of those films, The Full Monty comes out ahead with that acknowledgement. It really does just go to show that a film with heart, which can emotionally connect with audiences, is really the measure of a film's success, rather than the opening weekend figure. And at the time, the film surprised everyone involved with its whirlwind success. I thought it was a load of fucking pish to do. <laughs> Fox Searchlight, who'd made it, um, they saw the first cut of this thing and they went straight to video. And this thing went from like almost straight to video. To date, it's taken about 400 million or something. There could be several factors that contributed to its stardom, from its soundtrack, to mirroring the job situation of the working class at the time, to its simple but intriguing subject matter and premise. But for me, the charm of the film really comes from its comedy. Not that it's packed with obvious laughs, but the very British nature of the film showcases the comedy coming out of the tragedy of the character's real life situations. And instead of being a Hollywood magic mic appeal, it's grounded in the roots of the everyman, bringing a far-fetched idea into something that has now stood the test of time. Being a film under 90 minutes and an ensemble film, it still manages to make light of depression, suicide, body image, financial pressure, unemployment, sexuality, friendship, and struggles with fatherhood. All the while having a very clear ticking time bomb that the audience knows is coming. And I'm sure it's one of the reasons why the chemistry of the actors is so great because they too knew that they had to go through this act together. So when you're developing your screenplay and you want to strike a chord with the heart of audiences, make sure that the climax is external, visual, and clear. Like the full Monty, like the 15th round of Rocky, like the drum battle in Whiplash. Use this action, this choice as the guiding principle that shapes the rest of the narrative. Work backwards to really strengthen and find what is necessary to contribute to that final payoff. And if you get it right, the reading experience and the viewing experience should take the audience on a well-designed journey, of which the inner workings are invisible to them, and lead them to a climax that justifies and gives meaning to every moment before that. It's no accident that all the best films do this, and it's a carefully calculated emotional math problem that aims to achieve one thing, unity to climax. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video on what has become a bit of a cult classic. Let me know in the description any other screenwriting books that you have enjoyed today. I mentioned Kazan on directing and also backwards and forwards. A huge thank you to Chris Authors for becoming our latest Patreon. And be sure to subscribe for more videos on the way. See you in the next one.